Welcome to Elevate, practical content that inspires. I'm Valda Ford. And I'm Rochelle Rice. And we are committed to elevating the next generation of women in leadership. You're really going to love our guest today. Deetra Miller is the Chief Executive Officer of the Louisville Clemens Chamber of Commerce in North Carolina. She's going to talk to us about the power of building business relationships. But first, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is the person who makes it work at the chamber. She focuses daily on building relationships with local businesses, the community, and creating partnerships to develop programs and events that bring value to the chamber members and grow their businesses. Deetra also serves on as the chair of the Guilford County Board of Adjustment, a board member of the Better Business Bureau of Central and Northwest North Carolina, the chief innovation officer of startup media company, Carolina Black Media, and the founder and chief creative officer of Deetra Creative Media Group. Deetra, it's such a pleasure to have you here, and I'm looking forward to hear, and I'm sure our guests are, about how the Chamber of Commerce can help them welcome Deetra Miller. Thank you so much for inviting me. It is a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So good to have you. I'm going to let Rochelle kick it off. Deidre, so wonderful to have you. And I think the first question is, how did you become involved with our chamber, with your Chamber of Commerce? It was a divine intervention, I think. I wasn't necessarily looking for a Chamber of Commerce, but I heard about the Louisville Clemens Chamber and that they were looking for someone to fill the position of chief executive. And I thought, let me throw my hat in the ring because I had admired someone else that ran a chamber locally, Deborah Hooper, with the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. And I feel like, uh, or I felt like at the time, I'd learned a lot from her. So uh, at that point, I threw my hat in the ring and I won, if you will. So I've been with the Louisville Clemens Chamber now uh, since July of 2018, and it has been a lot of fun. We've had some challenges like COVID this year, but it has really been great. The thing about our chamber is the relationships that we've had with the small business community that has really brought our chamber to a level that's a little bit different from other chambers. Small businesses really, um, they're drawn to us. They really are. Well, considering that you're talking about small businesses, and I know with 2020 uh, being such a crazy year and so many small businesses really having to work hard to stay afloat, why would you tell anyone to join a Chamber of Commerce? Mm, That's a really good question. The reason most of our members have joined our chamber is to build those relationships and connections to grow their businesses. Most of our chamber members are involved in what we call leads groups, or they come to our monthly meetings. We usually have those in person where you can interact with about a hundred of our members at a time. Of course, we've had to have those virtually over the past few months, but it's building those relationships and it's so It's so much fun to um, hear the testimonials or see people talk about, you know, I just met so-and-so and and now I've got a contract with them or we're renovating their house or we're painting their, their, their porch or, I mean, whatever the business is, they build relationships with each other and give each other business and then they refer other people. So there is this power and connection with our members and their businesses that continues to help them grow. Yeah. You know, DJ, what would you say, though, is your strategy for creating these partnerships? Like, let's just say some of our listeners are super shy. They're not used to being, you know, asking people, telling people about themselves. What would you say your strategy is for helping people to create these partnerships? I can understand that. Um, There are times that 
it, it's tough for somebody to walk into a room, even if it's virtually, and share a little bit of information about themselves. However, if you're trying to build your business, the biggest obstacle is just showing up. And if you show up and just start talking, it'll, it'll happen naturally, I think. And with the folks that we have in place in our leads groups or at our chamber meetings or any event that you go to, there's somebody that's willing to hold your hand, if you will. So if you can connect with that one person, for example, we have ambassadors at our chamber, and that's a team of folks that know everything about our chamber, the things that are going on, and they're willing to, like I mentioned, hold your hand and introduce you to people. So if you're a little shy, you've got someone that will partner with you and say, hey, let me help you share your story until you're comfortable enough to share a little bit yourself. Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. I know that uh, I, I'm a Toastmaster and, and a part of a national speakers group, and I know that you're a Toastmaster as well. Sometimes yes, just <laughs> just showing up, as you say, is the main thing. So for, for people who come to these meetings and they get involved with developing these partnerships, these relationships, is there any... Uh, is there any good way for them to follow up for people who may be, as Rochelle said, a little bit shy or not accustomed to what is considered customary in the business game of following up with each other with calling up and having coffee and doing things like that? Do you have <laughs> a suggestion for them? Do they keep a do they keep a little spreadsheet of, OK, I'll call Dietra next time I'll call Rochelle or do, uh, do you have any thoughts on how to just make it better for those who are really timid about it? Yeah, so everybody has their different ways of doing things. We're fortunate as a chamber, we have a database and we can follow up with people that way. But for someone that's brand new to networking and they want to follow up with people or they're not exactly sure how, number one, get those business cards. If you're meeting virtually, you can't necessarily do that. But the great thing about our chamber, we have a member information center where you can log in on our website and you can look for contact information for anyone that you met virtually at a meeting or that you met in person at a meeting or that you've seen in our business directory. Oh, this person looks interesting. I think I want to reach out to them. And if you don't want to have a phone call with them, it's okay because you're a member, you're able to get their direct email address and shoot them an email. So some people are more comfortable sending an email, introducing themselves, and that's an easy way to do it. And mm -hmm. all of our members have access to every other member, and that's a way to follow up. And you can keep up with um, the folks that you've reached out to in that way. That, yeah, that's amazing because I think a lot of time, and I'm so glad you broke that down because a lot of times people don't know how to even make those first steps. Teacher, what's one strength about local chambers of commerce that you think many people often miss? That's a really good question. Oh, well, wait. I, I, have, a, that... I have a thought. I have a thought, Deidre. Oh. You tell me. <laughs> Go. You tell me okay. This is. <laughs> I mean, I just got excited. I was I was kind of anti-chamber for so forever because I'd always had my own business and always did fine and didn't necessarily think it was important. But I remember moving yeah. to where I live now. One thing at the local chamber was that being a member, I could even use their space for business meetings if I didn't have a space or I could get a lot of good information from from the people at the chamber. So do you have the option or mm -hmm. most chambers have the option for using the physical space for quick meetings or for conference rooms? So a lot of our local chambers do have space. We're located in the historic Boy Hill in Clemens. We don't have our own space to rent out. However, we are able to offer our chamber members a discount through our relationship with the Broy Hill, which is amazing. So they have different size conference rooms. They have a huge conference center. So that is a big bonus for folks. But we also have educational sessions that we share um, with our chamber members that are free. We have some that are paid. So they get a lot of education on how to handle their finances, how to network, 
how to use social media properly so they can market to people. There are so many opportunities just to learn more to grow your business. Yeah, I know that's something that's pretty exciting as well because if you are learning, I know like I will go to a diff- a conference and I'm sitting there and I'm excited about what the trainer is giving, but sometimes the fact that there's someone in the audience who has the same circumstance that I have <laughs> is explaining yes. what worked or didn't yes. work for them is just amazing. Yeah, have you I agree seen- 100%. Sorry about that. Have you seen a an uptick in membership during COVID or in the opposite direction? What would you say? That's a good question. It's gone both ways because, I mean, we have to face it, COVID has hit some businesses hard and folks have had to cut back on some things. So we have lost a few members. I'll be quite honest about that, but we've had members to join as well. Um, because they see the value in what building relationships locally for their businesses will do. And we've got people that are really excited. Um, We had a Young Professionals event last week, and we actually did it in person, but it was outside, and we had bonfires going on and and putt-putt and all that kind of thing at the local country club at Bermuda Run. And it was a lot of fun. And we had so many new members that had joined in the month of November and December just come and share their excitement and what they're doing. So it, it's gone both ways, actually. Mm. Now, I I know that there are a lot of small businesses out there that really benefit from what you're talking about, all the different trainings, because they can be incredibly expensive. I've seen conferences that I want to go to that are, you know, $500 for sitting at your kitchen table or four or $5,000 for going, yet those at the chamber are very frequently free or significantly reduced yeah. to maybe even a hundred dollars. But that's, <laughs> that's important. But do you also have, I've seen some chamber of commerce, um, grand openings on behalf of businesses. So the chamber has oh, a relationship sure. with the newspaper and the TV Uh, station to help with that. Is that a big boon to especially small businesses getting started? You know, our small businesses love um, having their grand opening celebrations when they're new to the area. So we offer ribbon cutting services for free. And as you mentioned, yes, we do have relationships with the press. So we make sure that we share that information with the Clemens Courier, for example, and we'll send um, news releases to the local television stations to let them know what's happening so that they can pick that up. So that's really exciting whenever they get news coverage like that for their grand opening. We also offer um, business before hours and business after hours, which is another way for businesses to share what services or products they offer, as well as, again, networking for folks. And these are free. And um, it's, it's amazing how many things the Chamber offers that um, can really be beneficial for folks just to know that you exist. Um, of course, there are some businesses that don't need a whole lot of promotion because people know that they're there. But for those smaller businesses that are just getting started, the Chamber is an amazing way to get the word out. Well, I have to tell you, I I appreciate this conversation today because I did not know a lot about Chambers of Commerce, and I am pretty excited to get rolling here. Let me ask you, it seems then that you, the Chamber, will play a significant role in business recovery post-COVID, would you say? I think so. Um, We were trying our best to do things during COVID to help our small businesses from having webinars, talking with um, healthcare professionals, including Ms. Valda Ford, about um, being safe and 